Hello, welcome to the Grumpy Stream for Wednesday night. I'm Josh Foreman, your Grumpy host. Working. Tired. Oh. Heather insists that I'm not grumpy, that I'm tired. Um, but Scola here, he is grumpy. And he's making the same expression I am, so I feel like that must mean that I am also grumpy. <sighs> What's happening? Uh, I've been trying to figure out that the last time I was uh, streaming on him, I was trying to find a better silhouette. I love what's going on with his head. I think that's great. Uh, the rest of his body is essentially a, almost a cube. He looks like he's a, a wrinkly cardboard box with arms. Uh, and last time I tried pushing and pulling in lots of different directions. I gave him a pear-shaped body. I gave him like a slopey triangle body. Um, and lots of other things. And I, I didn't feel like any of them were good. So, uh, so I don't know what to do now. I, I keep wanting to jump in. Whenever, whenever I get stuck, that's when my brain want, wants me to go in and start doing all this little micro detail. And like, no, not like that. And go like, hey, let's figure out, let's figure out what the microscopic um, little hooks on his on his nails are gonna be. And uh, that's not good. That's not that's not gonna help me figure out the bigger problems. In fact, it will hamper figuring out the bigger problems. I mean, I'm not even sure there is a big problem. I don't know that having a fairly graphic shape or primitive shape for his body is bad. All the other things I tried were bad. Um, so one thing I could do is, which I which I kind of did last time, but I didn't, come on, but I didn't quite do it uh, as extreme as I could. So I'm going to try to be super extreme and ridiculous. Just try a couple really random things. Okay, so now he's an Adventure Time character. Uh, King Onion. Uh, well, you know, presuming I could make the arms not do that. What's interesting about it is how it then mirrors his head. Um, but I think it, like, makes him to the point where he's... I can't see a realistic way for him to walk or move when I do that. Uh, when I pull them out this way, that, that doesn't help the, the front profile at all, obviously, but it does something. Oh, can you guys hear me? Is my voice coming through? I think it is. I forgot to um, make sure all the things are actually working. Looks like they are. Okay, everyone's just quiet tonight. That's fine. It's a grumpy night. You're allowed to be quiet. Um, so, this is kind of funny that he's, you know, this wedge. Uh, I mean, his ears are not always in this shape. They can flop down over his eyes, and they can go, like, absolutely straight up, and they can go straight back. Um, so it's not like this triangle wedge would always be maintained. I also, I also kind of want all of four of his legs to be kind of closer together. I don't want him to look like a really standard quadruped, even though technically he is. Uh, again, that gets pretty cartoony. <laughs> Off balance. If I make him super buff, dude. Ah, I'm buff. Yeah, that 
totally gets the wrong impression across. I think another thing I tried last time, but I'm going to try it again, is to give them a little bit of a hourglass figure. <laughs> again, that kind of makes him look like a like a tough guy. Not the look I want. And try to make them more of a ball. And he's, and he's kind of a snowman if he's got a ball body and a ball head. Oh, you know what? That's kind of working for me. Just inflating his sides out a bit like that. if I make them a little taller too. That's uh that's very owl like I guess. It's kind of becoming a quadrupedal owl with arms instead of wings. Hi, Dottie. Thanks for chiming in and making me feel less lonely. Um, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna pull his body down a bit. Oops. Mm -hmm. Trying to think of it. I, oh, I know what I can do. I can do this and this. That's a good way to stretch them out in a smooth way without distorting the feet. Curtis, hello. Says, little guy is cool. I definitely like him with the more rotund body. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty subtle from where it was, but suddenly I like him a lot more. I guess because it was such flat sides and now they're not so flat anymore. Uh, now I kind of want to scale his... Whoop scale his arms up a bit which requires pressing the right button unfortunately that can be hard whoa look what i did I think I've got just the arms. Let's see. Yes. Okay, so if we want to scale them, will that work? Not quite that much, but enough. He needs to be able to um, use his arms kind of like crutches, where he can like do this sort of. Yeah, like as though you can see that. You know what I mean. He wants to, he needs to be able to move his arms like this. <laughs> Curtis.
what it says. So I see that the organisms of Telfar are coming along. How is the geology of the world and the physics of it all coming together? Uh, they're coming together as fast as I get uh, experts in those fields to help me, which um, is not super fast. I've had some great feedback from uh, two oceanographers, but I have yet to get a geologist to um, field all my billion questions that I have. I'm hoping that I get some traction with this book. It, uh, it attracts a nice big audience, and any big audience is going to have a uh, sampling of uh, professionals from various fields, such as geology. And then maybe they'll read in my little foreword, hey, I need, I need help from you expert people. Please help me. And then, you know, next revision will have whatever fixes they have. Oh, man. I actually have to take this. Hello, this is Josh. Hi, Steve. Thanks for getting back to me. Yeah, yeah, it's a character's bust, and I would love to get it at half scale, but it has the neck and part of the chest, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be six inches. It would be closer to like eight or nine inches to be half scale. Okay. Okay. Uh, f five inches for just the head, not including the, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't need to be precise at all. I'm just looking for some, life size is too big for me to cast and, and sell or, you know, that sort of thing, so. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. What, what's your email? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you can, that, that'd be great. Okay, yeah, I, I come down to, to Portland occasionally, but I, I have no idea when I'm going to be down next, so. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, DJ was telling me about that. Sounds really cool. Yeah, I, I definitely want to go down sometime. I, th I think in May, the uh, there's there's a at the Portland Art Museum they have a, a Leica exhibit going on right now. So I'd love to catch that. So I got several incentives to get down there. <laughs>
that'd be awesome. That that that's what that's what DJ implied. So so that that's cool. Um, yeah, I'd I'd love to see the the quality that that we get out of it compared to. I've done a lot of stuff through Shapeways, and uh, so yeah, I'm curious what what you guys make. Uh, yes, the their highest quality one. It's like a semi-transparent photopolymer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested in, in seeing how that bronze casting uh would work out. I don't I don't have the finances right now to actually do that, but yeah. Lo love to see what you guys got cooking. Yeah. Yeah, assuming I had anyone who had that kind of money to spend on my art, yes. <laughs> exactly. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Steve. Okay. All right, I, go, I hope you guys weren't listening to that intensely personal conversation. I assume you guys uh, muted your computer. Uh, Curtis says, have you thought about reaching out to local professor at maybe university or city college in your area? Uh, yes, I have done those things. They uh, don't like getting back to me, apparently. I've actually done it both uh, just personally um, as well as as professionally at, at work, we uh, sometimes get guest lectures in in various uh, areas, uh, often in science. And uh, yeah, the, it's like they have better things to do than come talk to uh, wacky world designers like myself. So I'm trying to decide how I want to go with the wrinkles on this guy. I, I like the kind of even ribbing. Uh, but but now I'm trying to play with well, what happens if it kind of it kind of turns into more into looser sags as it gets near the bottom. And I should be working at lower resolution. I have a, uh, the, the guy I was talking to is from a company my, my cousin uh, founded, co-founded, I don't know. But they, they do uh, 3D printing. And uh, when I was down there for a funeral, a couple months ago, he was like, "Oh, you should uh, give me give me something to 3D print for you." When we got extra room in one of our batches, we can just just throw it in. So, um, yeah, figuring out all the uh, logistics for doing that. The uh, if you've seen any any of the other streams where I showed my Bowmark bust, that that's the one I sent down. I want to see what that's like at half scale. I think that would be pretty cool.
I would love to be able to kind of give those away promotionally. And then, hey, if I get a big enough audience, um, they do bronze casting with the print, like they print it out and that print actually goes directly to the foundry is so they don't have to, they don't have to mold it and do a nut, like a wax or whatever. They can just burn out the uh, resin or whatever, whatever it is that they, um, that they print it in. So it saves a step so it can be, it can be cheaper than doing a right, like where you actually sculpt it and then you have to mold it and cast it in wax. So yeah, depending on what you print, what material you're printing out, some things can be cast directly and some things need to be molded and then turned into another material before they're cast in something like bronze. But um, I have taken taken uh, 3D prints, mold them in rubber and then cast them in resin. That's what I've been doing so far. But it sounds like it would be um, like a minimum of six hundred dollars for me to to get several busts done, and I am not confident that I would be able to find people who want to pay six hundred dollars for a sculpture of mine. This, uh, this bagginess down here, I think, is doing a, a good job of, of um, the word's not explaining. I'll just say showing. It's doing a good job of showing that he can inflate. So it's kind of like a bullfrog chin or a, a blowfish uh, body. Man, we got the quietest stream tonight. We got no music and no people talking. Is it because I started it out by saying this was a grumpy stream? Is that why? I uh, I sent those vibes out into the universe, and and uh, Oprah was right. Now now I'm getting uh, grumpy vibes back from the universe. I should have listened to Oprah. Dang it. Hi, Aletha. How's your writing going, Aletha? Have you, uh, you're, are you halfway through your latest book? I know you got Magic is to Dance out on audiobook, but I'm not sure which book you're working on currently. Gotta figure out how to resolve where his arms go into this saggy flesh. Imagine it would be pretty pretty turtly. We bring up some turtles. Uh, no, not sound effects. Not those people. Um, No, not projects. Reference, there we go.
Last time I was working on this, I was collecting several cool turtles. There we go. This guy just has the coolest scales in the world. They're so dragon scales. It's awesome. Um, but specifically, I'm looking at these little wrinkles in here. Alitha says, I'm about 25 pages into a glitch in the cosmos and hoping to publish Magic is to Fly in March-ish. Cool. So specifically, I'm looking at, okay, here's, here's a defined limb, right? This flipper part. And here's this sacky, sacky, foldy material. And it looks like it's a pretty smooth blend into it although with his head pulled back in you know it becomes like a well it's a turtleneck um where's my next and previous oh that's nice yes that's what i want to do i don't actually want to go to the next picture in the folder i want to scribble on this folder thank you on this image Look, there it is. Why was that not there before? Okay. Uh, yeah, so here again, there's kind of a harder, harder surface body part here and kind of a turtleneck sort of uh, sleeve going into it. Such a such a sad looking critter. Soft shell turtle. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm imagining that Scola has these pr uh, pretty long limbs that are mostly kind of pulled in for his normal walk, but he's capable of stretching things out as needed. Anyway, that's all, that's all good, uh, good info for what I want to do. So I'm thinking if I, if I kind of build up a turtle sleeve here, let me get rid of his head. Yeah, Politha has self-published. How many books now? How many have you done? 8,000? Something like that. She is a very prolific author. And then actually, I guess I, I kind of want to build up a turtleneck around here too, so he can pull his head back and down into a into a bunch of folds of skin. The way my mom described it in the book was that he he folds into himself, so he looks like a like a rumpled black sack. It's always hard to figure out how to resolve um, vertical folds that then go into horizontal ones. It's hard for me. It's good for, or it's, it's, it's not hard for artists who are good at being artists, good at talking. Oh man, self-publishing is quite an adventure. 
you can you can put a lot into it that's for sure um, and there are a million resources online for for researching that I mean just just Google self-publishing tips or whatever and you'll find a trillion blogs and articles and I want his skin to be bunched up around his shoulders and around his neck, which, I mean, you can't see his neck at all, but presumably it's in there. Oh yeah, that reminds me, I wanted to do kind of a paint over thing. Um, so, I can grab this, right? I can use the snipping tool. Take a snip, and then I can draw right on it, can't I? Yes. Okay, so here's a skull. Eye socket, nasal cavities go up like this. There's a bottom jaw. Teeth like so, upper jaw, teeth like so. Uh, actually, I guess his skull goes more up like this. And then let's see. Here's where things get tricky because he's a quadruped. He's gonna, have, and he's a flat-footed quadruped, and he's a radial symmetry quadruped. This is something that, as far as I know, doesn't exist on Earth. I mean, starfish can be kind of close. They have radial symmetry, but, you know, they're just kind of spread out. So I'm imagining they've got their knees up here. So they're going to they're gonna be... So penguins have kind of short stubby legs but a lot of the bone is actually up under their um their flab i wonder if a quadruped like this would have uh yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say his pelvis is um like a four uh it's a radial symmetry with four divots, you know, pelvic divots that the uh, femurs fit into. SI joints? Yep, SI joints. Um, it's tricky then where the spine comes out because in quadrupeds, uh, they, you know, their tailbone attaches to the back of the pelvis and they have a very clear front and back. And if he is radial symmetry, you would expect then that the spine would come out of the middle. So I guess he could have the equivalent of like two pelvic girdles that are just facing away from each other. I know his shoulders here. Oh, Heather's doing some concept art for me over here. That's good. Jeff Nash, hi. Hello from Southern California. Did you guys get a tsunami warning today? Uh, let's, so the base of his skull, I'm gonna say is up in this area because I want his neck to be really serpentine. So if it comes out like a, like a weird question mark, And he can have his scapula here. Let's see, he's got a little rib cage. Kind of like so. I don't know how you do it. It'd have to be connected underneath too. So there would be a joint for the thing that then moves the legs for the ball and socket. 
Mm -hmm. So you would have to have like something that maybe came down and then spread and then had all these different structures. Yep. It would be but very if weird. But it ballooned out, I mean, I guess it would still work. Okay. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm definitely going to have to sculpt an actual skeleton for this guy before I come close to wanting to finalize him, but... Damon says, couldn't you have a normal spine pelvis like ours, but just have it be wider front to back and have two hip joints? Um, maybe. If that was the case, then the spine would go, uh, I guess the spine could also just follow his back like so. Yeah, that'd be really weird. And you'd have like this weird table pelvis coming out like that. We'll do a we'll do a red pin version of that spine. Got a little tailbone. Can erase. Oh. Another option is that he could have, I guess, close set femur connections, but this femur is just twice as long. And then he's kind of, <laughs> he's kind of sh shaped like a high heel shoe under there. Uh, let's see. And if it was a um, if it came down to the middle and then just had a long pel uh, pelvis with two sockets. I mean, is that is that any different than? what I was doing before. I don't know. I just, mostly I'm looking for things that completely throw it off. And, and one of the things that's getting close to throwing it off for me is how high the shoulder is uh, compared to the, like I wanted him to have a kind of this long turtleneck, like so. But to have that curled around in there, it, unless, let's see, it could, it could be curled around like this. That could be interesting. Okay, I'm going to erase all of it real quick. Okay. Eye socket, skull. Nasal cavities. Upper palate. On a human, the base of the skull is down here. So what if it's angled more like that? Although <laughs> it has to make an awfully sharp S curve. Is that a, is that a terrible thing? I don't know.
Uh, Curtis says, what is his spine and his, or what if his uh, spine, hips, legs were set up more like a hand with all the legs connecting much like flangy, phalanges connect to carpals, which then connect to radius slash ulna, which in this case would be the spine. Uh, that's an interesting thought. If that were the case, it would be like... Huh. I really like that idea. That makes a very alien, which, which I'm a fan of, because this is an alien parasite. I wonder if he would even have a rib cage at that point. I mean, okay, so the problem with the radius ulna, all that kind of stuff is it's not set up to accommodate organs in your forearm. Um, so rib cages are an awfully convenient way to protect that. Although, I mean, you got lots of... of uh, you have invertebrates who don't have rib, ca rib cages, and you have crustaceans and insects that don't have rib cages, but they have external, essentially, rib cages. I'm trying to think. So, like, octopi, squid, they've got internal organs and stuff. But they're super squishy. Maybe that's not a problem for this guy. He's got he's got so many great defenses. He's got these these spines, and he can puff up into a big ball and he can spit acrid stuff in your face and he's got sharp teeth and sharp claws uh, so maybe it's fine that they're essentially like leather water balloons um, given that they can they're so sharp and prickly uh, they would make eating them really difficult Let's see. I'm going to draw some organs in here real quick. So, he's going to need, he's going to need some really hefty lungs that could expand really big. Oh, well, blowfish are not inflating lungs, are they? Bullfrogs are not inflating their lungs to get their, their big sack filled up. Um, yeah, maybe he's just got, he's got vestibula that break off from the trachea and branch out into into his folded skin so basically his whole skin is kind of like an external lung that he can fill up Curtis says being symmetrical what if his organs came off of some sort of I'm going to assume you meant blade that just protruded from the main spine and all connected to it, if that makes sense. Uh, no, or look up Simming Gibbons. They inflate their necks to call. Yeah, Gibbons are creepy things. creepy yeah i mean that's a, that's essentially what a bulldog is doing right or not bulldog bullfrog um. okay so so you're suggesting that all the organs could be basically fixed to some kind of um I'm imagining sort of a, I mean, a sp normal spines have the, the, um, 
Mm, can't think of the word of what those spine things are that go along our spine and make our spine. Spine bones. So spine bones have all these fun little knobs and protuberances anyway. So having having them go inward and kind of be an anchor for the organs seems plausible to me. Still feel like having his shoulders here is problematic. Let's let's get a front a front image of him. Oops. Bottom jaw like so. And then his shoulders are here. This is where his rotator cuff would be. You can pull the clavicle in lots of different directions, but animals have it. I mean, most, most quadrupeds, they go like way further down than they do on humans. Um, so in a human, this goes to this, um, Eh, I'm, I can't word tonight, whatever. Goes to this front bone, and you've got... Connected to the seventh bone. Yeah. You've got that. So in this guy, it could be connected to the, these protuberances that are coming from the inside of the, uh, of the spine. And he's going to have these crazy long arm bones. Uh, the weird thing about that, well, actually, no, so he could still have a, um, yeah, again, I, <laughs> I just can't word tonight, I'm too tired, sorry. The shoulder blade bones in the back can still help support the musculature that needs to attach to the shoulder. So he can still have the, the kind of girdle that that would that needs to surround the base of a neck to be able to support all the neck muscles so maybe that's all right it's it's mostly it's mostly the side i guess that's seems to be a problem for me so let me try this one more time I could be getting hung up on trying to give him too um, spherical of a head. Uh, most most animals don't have a spear head like that. Like there's there's no spheres going on here so if his head did more of a um, elongated thing still gives them plenty of room for a big brain they definitely need big brains they're very smart uh, <laughs> thanks for the bone names guys vertebrae and clavicle yes uh, Mr. Piz people. Hi, mister. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, okay, so if we have 
shoulder socket here. Yep. The shoulder blade back here. I guess it doesn't need to hunch up. Although it. Okay. Is there undo? There's not undo in this. That's all right. Uh, let's pretend that the shoulder blade goes way down. Let's pretend that the clavicle goes way down. So, where does this backbone go? It can go out like this. In which case, I would want to build up more of, the, uh, more of the hunch on his back. Um, or it can do this. That's an interesting thought, come to think of it. If his real shoulder is down here, and then it goes up to where his visible shoulder is, and then down, so he's got a three, he's got two elbows essentially before you get to his, which which would be great because, because then normally he can kind of have his arms be a little stubbier, but then when he needs to do his his crutch walking thing, they can kind of poke out further like like a turtleneck. That's pretty interesting. In which case I can I can give the neck as nice and long of a graceful arc as I want. Although it's mm, Still has the issue that it, it there's you're not gonna have like a ninety degree sort of thing. I don't think. I mean, I guess so. Earth, Earth creatures that have spines, the neck is a continuation of the spine. It's not a separate anatomy, but does it need to be? So say he's got a spine that goes like this and a neck that shoots off it in the same way that an arm or a leg bone leaves a pelvis or a clavicle. Uh, Damon says, instead of having to store a curved spine, he could just have a very elastic spinal cord that can stretch out and it just causes gaps between the bones when he extends out. Um... Yeah. Although actually, I. So here's the thing. I'm not trying to solve a problem. So in in this mode here, this is kind of his standard. Uh, stance. Uh, and so, I don't really need him to stick his head out further than this. I need him to be able to withdraw his head further back, which causes these back bulges to kind of dump over his head. So then his head's down in here. And he's just got folds of skin and his ears kind of folded over his head. Uh, so in that case, this could be the fully extended version rid of all this so if this is the fully extended version then He can pull it back. Let me use a different color for pull back. He can... Actually, okay, so this is what I want to figure out. If it's fully extended like this, what is the natural arc of the spine going to be doing? Could be doing this. 
Let's just say that for now. So when he pulls his head down and in, like so, um, then his neck, uh, that's where it gets really funky. <laughs> Unless he pulled it back this way. It's kind of more believable that his head could hinge on the on the end of the neck than that the neck would hinge where it meets the spine. Uh, Damon saying, nesting vertebrae, they collapse in like stacking cups. Yeah, I, I guess I've kind of been subconsciously avoiding that because I can't think of a real world example of, I, I'm not sure how the, how the muscles would attach to a bone structure like that. I would not be at all surprised if that existed in nature, but I don't know what it is. Um. Either way, I think, I feel like this is, um, this is workable as is. Um, I'm going to enjoy going in and designing the skeleton, the muscular skeletal system for him later. But for now, I think there's, there's nothing that seems completely wrong and unworkable, um, which is what happened to me on another creature where I was trying to do a, a centaur type anatomy and running into all sorts of problems. Turns out centaurs are, are um, incredibly anatomically um, inconceivable if, if you want to try to make one realistic. So my centaurs are very original looking as a result. They're also more polar bear people than they are horse people. And they're not like half a human stuck onto half another animal. They just have like four legs and then a second torso and arms. Uh, Kurt says, what if instead of pulling his head in, he more so brings his shoulders up while putting his head with more of his chin down, causing the spine to be more a spine shape while the collarbones rise up. Yes. Yes. I like that. Because yeah, it's it's very easy to move and and we could I could certainly exaggerate the amount of motion that he could get especially if he doesn't have a rib cage if it's just the clavicle going around and connecting to um Da, da, da. the back bone blades. Yeah, I think this is totally, totally doable. Ah, come on, you could do it. There we go. I'm going to have to re-topologize this guy. Mo moved so many uh, large forms around. Uh, it's getting all stretched out in areas. Um, trying to think if I want to do more. You know, more folds and wrinkles are always better than less, in my opinion. Mm. Okay. 
Uh, Curtis is saying a cane shape for the spot, and I assume you mean. I love, I love foldy, flappy skin. It's so cool. It's very challenging to get right. It requires a lot of back and forth and just, well, for me, and just playing with it till it starts to read right. I'm still trying to develop a kind of a system for doing folds and wrinkles. Once I do, I definitely want to do a tutorial for that. I've, uh, I've watched other people's tutorials on it and I've, you know, read lots of art books and drawing books that show you how to do it. Um, but I have yet to absorb it in a way that I can, uh, consistently act on or teach others to do so but I would love to get to that point virals TV says electric plug joystick uh, tongue sticking out YouTube that's right I agree with all of that Terry Folds. What is Terry Folds? Is that is that someone's name or is that a, a way to make folds and wrinkles? It's from Rick and Morty. Uh, I have seen every episode of Rick and Morty. I'm not, I don't remember what that's from though. All right, let's see where my ZBrush skills are right now. I'm going to attempt to oh, just kidding I am going to save it then I'm gonna save a copy of it because I'm super paranoid of like corrupting it somehow okay now I'm going to try to Z remesh it do 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 This is one of those things where I only do it every couple months or years. And so every time I do it, I just ask, you know, a character or creature artist at work, how do you do this process again? And then they walk me through it. Or I look up a tutorial and then I realize the tutorial is like five years old. Oh, Virals TV where they, they were a, a naughty... Um, one of the bad men. Uh, I lost all the cool detail I had on the fingernails, which, I, I mean, I knew that would happen. I just forgot. That's fine. I still remember what I want to do. Yeah, so that evens out all the, um, the polygons on this. So now I can not have to worry about distorted stuff although this sure is dumb looking hmm. I don't know how you fix well let's see there is 
an inflate brush. Let me see if I can inflate it and fix it that way. Uh, there you are. In flat. Kind of like the, uh, I was wanting to give him uh, very unique claws. So many creatures uh, in creature design tend to just have like uh, raptor claws. And so I wanted to avoid that. I want to make this guy seem really alien. Like he evolved to be a parasite on these giant dinosaur like creatures. So his limbs are designed in such a way that he's great at moving over um, giant folds and wrinkles and scales and rubbery skin and stuff. And then also good at obviously picking off um, smaller parasites. Curtis says, you got to go back and see. It's a song I listened to a couple times in season three. I'm off for real this time. Good luck. All right. See you, Curtis. I'm, I'm just about done, too, so. I think I, I think I had a little bit of a breakthrough that I needed tonight. Um, I'm much happier with his overall form and more comfortable with uh being able to get his his internal anatomy working just fine um, i think next time i'll i'll figure out where exactly his his little spines are gonna go but but yeah i think this is a good place to call it for the night uh thank you all for joining me and probably see you this weekend as usual um is that is that all I have to say? Uh, hey, go to my website and look at uh, look at all my tales from Telefar stuff and comment on it. That'd be cool. Uh, the link is in the description. And uh, yeah, yeah, I was I was trying to remember. I should do um, call to actions. That's what those are called. A call to action at the end of all my streams because why why not? It's better than uh, mumbling random stuff like I'm doing now. Okay. Someday I'll come up with a whole, like, list that I remember. But today is not that day. All right. See you guys later. Good night.